I just wanted to welcome everyone. This is uh, always one of my favorite nights of the year because we get to, it's, it's a night where we can just focus on you and say thank you. Um, you are our donors and you're the people who make everything we do at Milk Impossible. But it, that has never been more true than this year. Um, when, I re when I was preparing my remarks for tonight, I was thinking about where we were at this year, at last year at this time. And I was remembering all the obstacles, all the scariness that we were facing as a school. Um, we knew that we were going to be faced with some of our biggest challenges we've ever faced as a school. Um, we knew that our families were, were facing challenges in their own lives that they've never, challenged, they've never faced before. And as a school, we wanted to make sure that we were there for them. Um, and so when we looked at all the resources that it would take to keep our school together and to continue to grow our school, uh, we, we had a choice. We can either cut or we can invest. And we chose to invest. And we can only do that because of the confidence that we had in our donor base to really understand that investing in our, in our kids means the world. It means the, the future of the Jewish um, community. It means that our kids are really the centerpiece of everything we do as a Jewish community. And so when I think about all the, the increase that we had in tuition assistance, and I think about the technology we have in the classroom, and I think about the safety precautions we were able to invest in, um, all of that was made possible because of everyone on the Zoom call, because of you. And so when you think about, hey, I just sent in a check, um, please know that that's not all you did. You made a huge difference in the lives of students and faculty and you made an impact in, in really an important part of our community. So thank you for all you did. And I wanted to just take a second to mention a couple of highlights. We fundraised more than we've ever fundraised before as a school this year. I think that deserves an applause because what that means is we were able to, to invest in the toughest year in our school's history and able to come out on top and basically and continue to grow as a school. Um, more grandparents gave to our school than ever before. And I know I see a lot of grandparents on this call. I just wanted to say thank you. And it, you really understand the value of Lidover Door and, and can, we look forward to continuing to, to grow our, our grandparent um, group with our school. Alumni and alumni parents gave more than ever before as well. And I mean, it's been so um, rewarding to, to speak to our alumni, to, to meet more alumni parents and to really hear how Milken has really made an impact on their, on their families' lives. And then, and then our, our families really stepped up this year. And, and I wanted to take a second to say thank you. We know this year was tough and you still came out and invested in our school and it means the world to us. And as we said, all the success ca cannot happen without a village, without people working hard every day at this. And so I want to take a second to recognize um, some of our incredible lay leaders. Um, I wanted to meet Brad Pressman, Saul Smith, Joe Breckner, Jonathan Golden, Nazi Kohanim. Are, they're, they're the leaders of our incredible annual fund committee, and they deserve so much, um, so much uh, uh, gratitude for everything that they did this year. Their leadership and passion, it, it, it's incredible getting to work with them and leading us, being our partners. Uh, Lauren, Lauren Harris, I, I think I saw her, but um, I mean, I wish we were in person, we can do a standing ovation, but she deserves it. And, and being our, our partner in crime, uh, passion, always there with us, always always um, sharing her expertise day and night. Thank you, Lauren, for everything you, you did for, and she's our development director, our development chair. Um, I wanted to thank our board of trustees. I, I also see a lot of you on this call. Um, your leadership, your support, your, your visioning, it means the world. And Lisa Applebaum, our our head of school, Sarah Schultkin, you're two of the most incredible partners uh, for external relations that we can ever ask for. Um, I also want to take a second to recognize um, Hillary Hellman and Mika Sigik in our, in our development office, uh, Vivian Friedman, who continues to support us. You all are, I'm honored to work with you every day. And I think our community, they, they, are, they, they are incredibly um, proud of you and everything you've done. And I am, I get to see it every day of their, it's not just a job to them, it's a true passion. So thank you for everything you've done, you've done not just tonight, but all year. Um, and then last but not least, I want to thank you again, our donors for everything you did. You'll never know how much you guys mean to us and everything you've done for our students. It means the world. And I, I just want to genuinely say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all you did this year. You, you took 
what could have been one of the most challenging years in Milken's history and made it into an incredible year of growth and opportunity. And now we're in an incredible position to continue moving forward and growing our school and growing our, our, our future for our Jewish community. So thank you. So I want to pass it over to Lisa Applebaum. Well, thank you, Danny. Normally I say I hate to follow Sarah, but now I really hate to follow you. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm Lisa Applebaum. I'm chair of the board of trustees. It's wonderful to see so many of you virtually and I see so many new faces and I hope next year that we get together together in person again and I get to meet all of you that I don't know and then also just see all of those that I do know. Um, I miss you all so much. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm an alumni parent of the school. I often say that I had no doubt my children would receive an amazing education when they were students at Milken. What I didn't realize was how impactful that education would be after they graduated Milken. All of our children, as I am sure our alumni parents would attest, continue to stay connected to each other and Jewish causes even after they graduate. The values that they learned at home and which were reinforced at Milken, caring for one another and the community are demonstrated by our alumni students each and every day. Our current students and alumni embody our school's mission, which is to educate Jewish children so they can surpass us and really create a better world. Milken is the amazing institution it is because of all of your generosity. Gathered here virtually tonight are supporters who continue to invest in our school, especially in a year like none other. As Danny mentioned, your contributions enabled us to educate our students and remain connected to one another during the pandemic. They enabled, uh, they enabled parents who experienced significant financial hardship to continue to send their students to Milken. They also enabled our teachers to stay connected to our students using state-of-the-art technology and allowed us to continue to provide our students with educational and other resources, which were really invaluable this year. I want to take a moment to express my gratitude to all of our professional staff and teachers who have shown creativity and resilience during this past year. I also want to thank our incredible advancement team, Danny, Hillary, Mika, and Vivian, who allowed us to gather tonight in the most creative way. And of course, Lauren, we couldn't do it without you. Um, and I, I just, I'm amazed, I, I said it at the beginning, but I just love the goodie package, even though it doesn't come close to gathering in person, it's just so creative. And I hope that everybody gets a chance to take a look at the miniature cheese board that was created in our very own Garen Fab Lab. And I hope that all of you who haven't had a chance to view that get to uh, do so. I also want to thank our board of trustees and our lay leaders who help guide the school. And of course, I wanna acknowledge Dr. Sarah Shulkin for her innovation, strategic vision and agility. I couldn't have a better partner in my work as a board chair. Lastly, I want to thank all of you, current parents, alumni parents, board members, lay leaders and community members who believe in the school and, to con and who continue to give generously. We are so grateful that you recognize the importance of Milken in our community and its impact on generations of Jewish young adults. So thank you. I really appreciate all of your support. Um, it's just been an amazing year, as Danny said. Um, we couldn't possibly have anticipated all of the challenges, but you all invested in our school. And I think our students are um, just, they are the beneficiaries of it. So thank you. And I want to now turn it over to Dr. Sarah Shulkin. Lisa, thank you so much. Um, I won't repeat all of the thank yous because honestly, I could thank each one of you on the screen for your contributions this year. It, um, 
you know, it is hard to explain what this group means to the school. And so instead of giving you a really big picture philosophical speech, I actually just wanna take you through one hour of my day today. So I led a tour of a very influential family in the community that's considering the school for sixth grade. And I think when you go on this tour, what you see is the quality of learning and the quality of community that is a direct result of this group's contributions to Milken. We got to campus and um, I'm sure many of you saw this, but the science team was dressed in Star Wars costumes. So our three science teachers, and I, of course, you know, I'm not really cool enough to know why they would be dressed in Star Wars costumes, but as the students explained to me, it's because it's May 4th and may the force be with you. So they're standing there surrounded by a gaggle of kids playing trivia, Star Wars trivia on their, on their free time, on their lunchtime. And why are they playing Star Wars trivia? For house points. And there's a competition board up about who is getting the most points to contribute to their houses, which is new this year. And from there, we walked down, uh, downstairs and we walked into the maker space, the middle school maker space, where there is a group of students. Renee, your son was in there. And I actually do know the difference between Eli and Sam as a parent of identical twins, but the mask really throws me off. So it was either Eli or Sam was in the room. And I walk in with this tour and every kid jumps up like they're cheering. And the sixth grader turns to me and he says, is this for real? And you know, the, the kind of ruach, the kind of quality of relationships that the kids had with the adults was apparent and shocking even to somebody stepping foot in the classroom for the first time. And then we walked up the corridor through the middle school and we walked into Wendy Hawkins science class, where by the way, I saw Bruno Lori, you'll be happy to know. Um, he was very focused and into creating his own uh, experiment. And Wendy is standing there with someone on the OWL technology and the rest of the class in there and telling them that they need to give her a list of equipment for what they'll need for their experiment. So she has it ready for them tomorrow. And this group of kids as young scientists is so engaged with her in figuring out the kinds of questions that they're gonna ask and the kind of work that they wanna do. And again, this family visiting the school turned to me and said, so you know, where are the rest of the students in the class? Because of course the class size was 15. And so from there, we walked up to the high school campus and we walked into the Garen, um, which was actually surprisingly quiet, um, which is to say that there wasn't, you know, 45 students in there. There were more like 25 students in there. And we go into the Garen and there is Aiden, who's uh, doing a whole, I mean, I'm probably not even using the right language, but he's basically, he's coding something. And this prospective sixth grader sits down next to him and they go through this whole explanation of coding and robotics and what he's interested in. And this 10th grader who's in the middle of doing his own work takes 10 to 15 minutes out of his own time and tours him around the lab and shows him what we're all about. And then we walk onto the high school campus and we're mostly sort of between class periods. And so I start saying to kids, tell me your favorite thing about Milken. So I stopped the first student who um, came from Paul Revere. So she had a year at Paul Revere because it's before we had our sixth grade and then she moved into Milken. And I said to her, Jaden, tell me what's the difference between being at Paul Revere and being at Milken? And she said to this family, I'm this I'm quoting, I wrote all of this down from the kids. She said, it's like being at a learning camp. She said, when I got here, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was pretend. She said, it was unbelievable to me how much teachers care about their students and how close the community is. And so we walked on and we walked to another student. I said, tell me your favorite thing about being a student at Milken. And the next child said, actually this was Teddy Gilman who the first thing he did was when we walked into the architecture room came rushing over because he wanted to make sure he got to be the one to tell the prospective student about what was going on in architecture class. And then he said to me, um, he said, you know, I love it because, you know, it's like we're all Jews. This is like one big Jewish community, he says to this prospective 10 year old. And he said, you know, I just, I feel like I'm really part of something. Like I'm part of something big here. Uh, which sounds, of course, an awful lot like our portrait of the graduate belonging to something greater than yourself. 
And then we walked on and we saw this group of students sitting downstairs and I had heard Jordan Feldman, not Jordan Feldman, his brother, Eitan Feldman, giving his science presentation. And I said, oh, Eitan, like, tell us what's your favorite part of being a student at Milken? Fully expecting him to launch into his science research and his work at a lab. But no, he says, I love that our teachers are so excited to have us back. It's so clear how much they wanted to be in class with us. And then we moved on and we went downstairs and we saw a new 10th grader who transferred into the school. And I said, so, and tell me, what, what is it like to be new here? What's your favorite part of the community of, of Milken? And again, this child said, I love that everyone is welcoming, that we are all part of one family. So on the one hand, you could say, what does this have to do with the annual funds? What does this have to do with my support of the school? And I am here to tell you it has everything to do with it because the quality of the educators that we are able to bring onto our campus that help to create the kind of environment that leads every single student I stopped to give some version of the answer when I say, what do you love about Milken? That what they love about Milken is the community. That is a direct result of the kind of investment that this group has made in the school. And when a child coming out of a public school environment is literally shocked by the class size, by the equipment, by the activity in the classroom, by the fact that students want to be with their teachers, by the quality of the assessment and the learning and the interesting assignments that are going on, that is a direct result of the giving and the support of this group. And I want you to know that it's not only about the tangible list of furniture that we give you that we were able to purchase for our students to sit on, uh, which by the way, the ninth graders already told me they need more <laughs> because they were sitting on the ground, which actually very sweetly, Isabel Elias, who's a ninth grader, I said to her, so are you guys sitting on the ground because like you wanna be sitting on the ground? And she said, well, you know, it's okay with us. You know, we're, we're comfortable, it's fine. But yeah, if you could get like another couple of chairs, that would also be good. So, you know, it's not only about the fact that we were able to use the investment of this group to purchase the furniture, the technology, to make everything that we needed to make happen this year happen. It is about the quality of the interaction and the ways that we are able to live our core values and fulfill our mission. And having the support of all of you means the world to me, but most importantly, to the students who are on campus every day. So. Short of showing it, you my, showing it to you myself, I just have to say what is happening at Milken is really spectacular, not only in the big picture, but in the, in the kind of everyday interactions and in the kind of community that our students are living in. So thank you so much. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Hope Wintner Mizell. My husband, Ted, is somewhere in here. I don't have the full screen up, so he can wave. Um, Ted and I have two daughters who have been at Milken. Tali is a freshman in college and Arielle is a senior. Lucky for us, we hit the jackpot and got back to back seniors during COVID. I'm gonna tell you a bit about these two young women who are very different from each other in many ways and how Milken has been there equally for them and for who they are. Tali is our naturally outgoing daughter, a born leader. She's out there making waves, making stuff happen. We used to joke that she was actually running Milken by the time she graduated. She's a social justice warrior who cares about having a positive impact on the community and the world around her. And when Tali was a sophomore, she realized that Milken needed a safe place for female identifying students to come together, talk honestly and support each other. So she went to Rabbi Sean, who's one of our amazing faculty members and with whom Tali has had a close relationship. Without hesitation, Rabbi Sean said, let me help you with this. So Tali with a few other students launched an activity that brings together these girls and teachers so that they can learn from each other and be there for each other, no judgments. It's now in its third year and I will say preview, our other daughter Arielle is now one of the Girl Talk leaders. And as she graduates, she will hand it off to the next group of student leaders. So thanks to Milken saying, we hear who you are and what you say this school needs. There's a group that is going to outlast the Mizell sisters because that's how Milken rolls. They trust their students, they trust their faculty, and they trust the legacy that can be created. So that's Tali out there, charismatic, asking for what she needs and wants, really advocating for herself and for her community. The Milken leadership fostered her confidence to be this way. 
Then there's Arielle. She's a little more introverted. And actually she's now said that she identifies herself as being an ambivert. Her passion is architecture and all things design. She likes to create and build and build things. She's also worked insanely hard through high school in a full range of academic subjects. And to be honest, she is definitely afflicted with an impressive case of senioritis. We all understand that, yet she still has a full schedule and a lot of work to complete before June, particularly in architecture. Her amazing teacher and mentor, Deborah Sokolo, out of respect for what she knows Ariel cares about, keeps checking in with her, keeps pushing her and inspiring her to do the quality work that Ariel is capable of in a loving and firm way uh, to show up for who she is. As a result, Ariel has and continues to create impressive work that few high school students anywhere have the opportunity to do. So I will tell you how Milken works and the outcomes achieved. Tali is now at Brandeis and is pursuing that social justice warrior path. She's studying, she's leading, and she's building community wherever she goes. She's already changing the world. And many of the seeds that were planted and nourished while she was here at Milken are now coming into bloom in college. Milken allowed her to be who she was and said, yes, who you are, what you say, and what you care about matters. And we're gonna show up for you. Arielle is heading off to Wash U in St. Louis to study architecture and design. I can't imagine that happening without the support of teachers like Deborah Sokolow, who are saying, I believe in you enough to stretch you and inspire you so that you can be the best of who you are. Your talent deserves to be nurtured. There are so many other stories I could tell you about how each of our girls found their voices during their, their years at Milken. I could tell you about the epic production of Les Mis that Tolly was in her freshman year. She had such an extraordinary experience. I think she's still tired from it, by the way, four years later, and felt so supported by the seniors that when she was a senior in last year's production of Fiddler on the Roof, she was determined to create a similarly meaningful experience for whom she referred to as her freshies. Partly because of who she is and partly because Milken has taught the kids, that's just what you do. I could tell you about Arielle delivering her senior sermon to the entire Milken community in which she addressed the feminist issues raised in the poem story or how she was selected by the Milken faculty to be one of the three student speakers at graduation. I have many stories and I could go on. I just wanna point out that we have two daughters who are very different in many ways and yet one school was able to meet many of their respective needs. But most importantly, what I want you to hear is that as our girls head out into the world as young adults, they're better prepared to be fully who they are and impacting the world in a positive way. I attribute much of their confidence to the support and inspiration they found in the faculty and administration. Not only teachers like Rabbi Sean and Ms. Sokolow, but others like Ms. Flyer, Ms. Guth, Mr. Byrne, Ms. Turk, Mr. Rayner, the rabbis, the list is long. I don't have time to name everybody. There are so many whom we think of as change your life kind of teachers. Those who support wisdom, stories, and inspiration continue for years beyond graduation. Thank you for your support. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Turkey, and um, I'm the oldest student at Milken. And I think I'm the oldest student that ever was at Milken. And there's an interesting story why, and I'm here to tell you guys, and I'm very proud of it, so you know. So I came in 10th grade, I moved across the country from New York, and I said to Milken, I want to repeat the year. I don't want to move. I want to not leave in tears. I want to make a community and really get to know my school. And the first thing that Milken said was, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> so I immediately jumped on. I started in 10th grade for the second time. And there's another reason why. I also want to go on TIFF. So if you guys don't know what TIFF is, it is a program where you go to Israel for like four months and you live in Israel and you really learn what it's like to live in Israel, not as a tourist they say, but as an Israeli, and you live on the streets, you walk around, you really experience Israeli culture. And that Israeli experience really showed me what it meant to care for others. And it really changed my entire view of this world. Because it showed me that there's a saying that we learned, if I'm not for others, what am I? And that saying still sticks to me today, because it showed me the value of being there for other people and caring about other people. So as I came back from Israel, I kept that with me throughout my entire Milken experience. And I started working as an EMT. And I started working in emergency medicine, worked on an ambulance and started taking all these classes and still balanced out of school. And Milken was there for me. And the idea that Milken was there for me led me to be there for another member of the Milken community uh, a few months later. 
I was at a bar mitzvah. Uh, my best friend sister's bat mitzvah, sorry. And a milk and grandfather started choking. And there was doctors that everyone was drank a little, so people know what's going on. And it's a huge bar, bar mitzvah. So I just, I jumped in because I learned what I learned from Tiff, leadership. And if I'm not there for others, what am I? And I was thankfully able to save his life. I cleared a big meatball, came out of his mouth, uh, really nice size. And it was kind of like Milken was there for me. And I was able to be there for Milken. And it was a really special moment to me. And I think I spoke to Dr. Shulkin about it and a few of my teachers. And it really showed me what I want to do with my life is to be there for others. And then COVID hit. So it probably wiped everyone else's plans, so summer plans, school plans, everything, wiped mine completely. So I said to myself, I'm not going to let this get in the way of my, what I want to do with my life. So I moved to Israel. So around August, I moved for July. I don't remember. I moved to Israel. I quarantined for two weeks by myself. And I started working in an ambulance in Israel. And I emailed my teachers. And I was like, well, sir, I was working at the IDF Homefront Command with Magan Davida Dome, if you don't know. And we, they teamed up during COVID. So I was working during COVID during the day and night times to do 24-hour shifts. And I school was coming. We knew it was going to be online. And I said to myself, why am I going to go home to sit? by myself every day and just do school online. So I emailed Mr. Lindsay, all my teachers. And the first thing I heard was, this is perfect for you. We're so proud of you. And we want you to go ahead and do this. So essentially what happened was I was balancing school at night, school, well, school at like six in the afternoon. And then I'd go straight to work at eight o'clock at night. And I'd be up till nine in the morning working in the ambulance. And I'd, my, you could ask Ms. Kierman, some of my teachers, I'll be putting on my hazmat suit to go to COVID patients. And I'd have class in one hand and I'd have the patient in the back in the other. And it ended up becoming a thing where I learned, I didn't know, first of all, I knew, knew no Hebrew, didn't know anything when I came to Milken. When I left Israel, I was essentially fluent and I became a translator for other, for other um, international volunteers. And I also became a supervisor on the ambulance while balancing school. And I couldn't imagine another school that would let me do this first off, but I couldn't imagine this school let that would have me, that would let it be so successful. And it wasn't just the school that was there for me, it was my community, my friends pushing me every day after school. And I saw someone doing CPR and someone wouldn't make it. My friends would call me and be there for me. My teachers would email me saying how proud I am for me. And that's what Milken really did for me. And I'm still in shock that I had that experience. And it's an experience that will impact me and shape me for the rest of my life. And it's experience that's going to stay with me and determine what I do with my life and what decisions I make in the future. And now that I'm back home, I said to myself, I don't want to, I used to want to do politics. And I said to myself, I don't want to be in politics. I want to do something that affects people in the moment. I want to do something that helps people. So this experience really changed my entire view on the world. And I'm going to go into medicine now, my goal is, and to be a doctor, to be able to not just provide the care that I know how to provide, but provide care to even it's more extensive aspect. And because Milken gave me this experience, they allowed me to shape my worldview. And I'm so thankful for that every day. And I say, I, I say this one thing to everyone. I said, it's because Milken doesn't just see me as, see us as an individual. No, sorry, doesn't just see us as a community. They see every student as an individual in that community. And they really focus all their attention on that. And coming from a public school, that's something I'm forever thankful for. So all I can say is just thank you for making my view of this world possible. Good evening. My name is Mark Rudayev. Uh, many of you might know me as a math teacher, some as a finance prof, some even as a soccer or tennis coach, but many of you may not know me at all. But as you can see, I wear many hats here at Milken, as do most of my colleagues around campus. It's my seventh year here. In addition to all these formal responsibilities, I'm also the parent of a 12th grader who's graduating in a couple of weeks and will soon become an empty nester. But don't worry, I'm sure that Milken will find many ways to keep me busy over the next uh, few months. Prior to coming to Milken, I had an entire first career in finance and investing. But one day I made the decision to try to help people in a different way. And I traded in that career for hopefully what has turned out to become a much more fulfilling one as a teacher. This brings me to one of the first unique aspects about Milken. It's willingness to take calculated risk and embrace unique individuals, all with the primary goal of enhancing the school and our scholars learning environment. 
So I'd like to share a specific example of how Milken is willing to respond to the needs and desires, not just of the community and of its students, but also to help everyone grow. During my first year at Milken at the middle school campus, I started an investment club. Just a handful of students, we'd meet in my classroom at lunch on Thursdays, all really informal. We'd spend the hour talking about stocks or the economy or whether the latest Lakers trade made any sense. I'd also try to make it a point though to discuss how people should be responsible with their wealth and uh, the importance of those that are more fortunate, uh, like many of the families at Milken, to give back to their local communities. Within a few months, we expanded from just three, four students to eventually a dozen and then a bit more. Over time, the buzz on campus continued to grow. And by the winter of my second year, Chris Scarlatta, who at the time was assistant principal at the middle school, and the administration team realized that maybe we had started planting the seeds of something that can be much greater than just a little lunchtime club. So at that point, Walt Steele, uh, the head of the department, uh, wrote a proposal uh, for a formal finance class. We drafted a syllabus. And in 2016, we launched the class called Investment Finance and Entrepreneurship. This went alongside some of our other great electives, such as photography, colejad, or robotics, and Spanish, and so many others. I'm proud to say today that the finance class is consistently one of the most popular electives, and many students at the middle school look to take it uh, another semester if possible. That was then. What about now? The upper schools begun to start offering finance classes too, and not surprisingly, the interest has been equally strong. So over the past year, Adam Steele and I, we've been collaborating together to create a full suite of course offerings for grades six through 12. And I'm pleased to say that in the upcoming school year, our finance program will include now two separate classes at the middle school and up to six different offerings at the upper school. Now I'm telling you this not to brag about the success of my teaching, although uh, I'd like to think I'm quite good at it, but to demonstrate how Milken is responsive to the student needs and constantly searching for ways to better prepare your loved ones to succeed, not just in college, and we heard a few college bound uh, students here, but also beyond. The school's always thinking of ways to provide the young men and women on our campus with tools they need to be productive, responsive individuals, and what they can do to help those around us with less fortunate circumstances. And one of the ways of doing so, of course, is being wise with their investments and being mindful of how to deploy their savings. As mentioned earlier, this is my seventh year at Milken. So some of the seventh graders, my first year are now in college, which makes me feel really old. And it's not an exaggeration to say that I receive emails and text quite frequently from students and parents asking me questions about finance or the markets. For those of you that have been following it over the last 12 to 18 months, you probably know things have been quite volatile. It can be summed up in one word, Dogecoin. I'd like to share a couple texts, and I've noticed that one of them does come from a parent that's on the call, so I hope it's okay. The first comes from a student who's now a first year at USC, and he wrote me this just a couple of weeks ago. Do you think a crash is coming? I'm thinking of buying some puts on all these stupidly inflated companies. Now, by the way, stupidly inflated, that's a highly technical finance term. Um, we can talk about that later. By the way, I was accepted to a club at the school called the Global Investment Society, which puts me on path of becoming an analyst at the club, meaning I practice researching and pitching stocks to them. And then we had a back and forth on what to do with the markets. Now, the second one is from the parent, so I'm not gonna give away who it is. I really enjoyed the piece on re reforming higher education. Oh, I've got a blog and I talk about random thoughts and I wrote about reforming higher ed in one of them a couple of weeks back. I'm hoping that you and your family are doing well. I was thinking of you as Julian and I had breakfast today and he was telling me about how much he likes, quote, learning something that I can use, unquote, in your class. Our omnipresent adolescent judges, smiley face, exclamation point. This highlights another thing that makes Milken special. The word community is in our school's name and we're constantly seeking ways to reach those beyond who spend the 7.30 to 3.30 hours on our campus. And we've been hearing from a lot of parents that many of them would be interested in furthering their knowledge in financial markets and investments. So we're exploring parent education opportunities as well and offering similar courses to the larger community. So stay tuned. 
I'm sure Sarah and the team might have some details in the next few days, weeks, months. I trust that my story and journey in our finance program gives you a firsthand account of what makes Milken different and demonstrates how the school is willing to invest in its students, faculty, and community. To be frank, they took a chance on me. I was a middle-aged man with some unique experience and skills, but still I was only a first year teacher seven years ago. They realized that I could help the schools in, in a way or in a few ways that maybe more experienced teachers couldn't. And so the investment they made in me has strengthened my desire to help the school as I realize that I'm quite valued here. And I'm sure that I'm not unique in feeling this way. The growth of our finance program and making it accessible to more students to more families is just one example of that. So that's the milk and you're part of, that's the milk and I'm part of, the one that's rooted in tradition, that obviously thinks about the now, but is always looking towards the future. We're preparing your loved ones to have the toolkit to adapt and thrive in the ever-changing needs and skills required to succeed in the 21st century. I'm really grateful to be part of it and trust you feel the same. Thanks a lot. Hi everyone, I think that's my cue. Um, it's great to see you all, even if it's on Zoom. I'd like to introduce myself to you. I am Sophia Kingavari. I'm a current senior at Milken on the edge of graduating. And like many of my peers who transitioned from middle to high school, I came into my freshman year thinking I knew exactly what interests I wanted to pursue and I knew exactly where I wanted to go in life. Um, I loved writing in middle and elementary school. In fact, I was set on cultivating my love for English by becoming either a journalist or a lawyer, but I never truly thought about math or science as being a career option for me. Upon enrolling in the required core science classes at the high school, such as chemistry and biology, I found myself fascinated with the intricate processes of the human body and the way that you could know all about the properties of a single element just by looking at a periodic table. Soon, my teachers started to notice that I had an aptitude for and an interest in the sciences. And throughout the years, my teachers encouraged me to pursue my interest in science. Throughout the years, they actually told me that I should get rid of my apprehension and my preconception that I had about such an intimidating subject. Looking back, I now realize that this is what made Milken so amazing. The teachers here see the students for who we really are and actually give us the support as well as the attention that we need to nurture our talents rather than just make sure that we know the material for our next exam. Although I can name every teacher who challenged me to take an interest in the, to take my interest in the sciences further, I'd like to focus on one of those teachers in particular today. Ms. Deborah Orlick, um, I actually think she's in the Zoom right now. So hi, Ms. Orlick. Um, if you don't know her, Ms. Orlick not only teaches computer science and engineering at Milken, but she is our innovation and fabrication integration instructional leader. That was a mouthful. Uh, as well as the manager of the school's technology hub known as the Garen. And one day before I, I had taken any of Ms. Orlick's classes, I walked right up to her in the Garen and I asked to be an intern. I wanted to be in the lab learning how to use all the machines like the laser cutter or the 3D printers and the vinyl cutter. And I had developed a real passion for science. So that was one reason why I wanted to be an intern. But apart from that, I was very eager to get a hands-on experience in this field. She gave me a chance, hired me on the spot, and I actually started my job the next week. Before I knew it, I was prototyping different projects, making sure that the machines all ran smoothly. And eventually I actually started to teach my peers how to use the machines as well. After working in the lab for some time and memorizing the procedure for each machine, Ms. Orlick would send any students in need of guidance to me and I would show them how to operate the technology. Essentially, I became a sort of supervisor. I know what some of you must be thinking. That sounds stressful. <laughs> but to me, taking care of the machines and learning the software needed for the prototyping or for prototyping back to the future themed keychains was pure bliss. In fact, my short time as an intern in the Garen is probably one of my fondest memories of high school before the onset of COVID-19. Um, throughout the past year, which has been fully online, Ms. Orlick found a way for us to learn how to code and how to program a Lego robot by hand, by hand delivering packages with all the necessary tools needed for each activity to our houses. 
even at a time when learning was a real obstacle, and I can say that as a student firsthand, teachers at Milken figured out how to expand their teaching abilities all the way to our front doorsteps and to make it easier for us to actively engage in class. I came to Milken not really knowing that I had any interest in this area, but over time, the hands-on work that I got to do at the Garen, along with the captivating classes that I had the opportunity to participate in throughout high school, um, made me realize that this is what I wanted to do in life. This is what I'd like to pursue. Uh, in fact, that's what has led me to speak before all of you today and proudly announce that I'm a committed UCLA student, go Bruins, <laughs> planning to major in neuroscience next fall. Thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you to all of our speakers. I hope that you feel as proud as I do about our incredible school and incredible community. Um, there is one person that hasn't been thanked on this call, uh, actually probably more than one person, but that you may not know, but I know really well, um, Erin Henney, who runs Theater Dybbuk, um, who helped prepare our speakers and partnered with Hillary Hellman to vision what this evening would be. Um, Aaron is a close friend and was part of my Wexner Field Fellowship. So we spent four years together. And I can just tell you that we were very, very fortunate to have his guidance in shaping this event and uh, to Hillary for thinking of all of the sort of creative content that led to making this night happen. I think even though it was virtual, you got a very, very good taste for what makes this community special. And um, I, I was trying to text Kimberly and Gordon and Lee Moore while this was going on, although I failed because I couldn't multitask, to tell them that all of this is a reflection of their work and their educational leadership, that every teacher you heard, every parent, every student is all about their leadership, your, your leadership as our donors and community members, and everything that we have built together, we have a lot to be proud of. So thank you all for joining us this evening.